Hello and welcome to this video from Accounting How. In this video, we're going to look at how to prepare a statement of corrected profit given a list of errors that have been found in the ledgers. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like and share the videos. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Accounting How. So this is the question that I'm going to look at in this video. As always, you might wish to pause here, have a go at it yourself if it's a topic that you're familiar with, and then play the rest of the video to work through and compare with your own answer, or just stay with me and do the question with me. Max prepared a draft income statement which showed a profit for the year ended 31st December of £7,840. He then discovered the following errors. As you might know from my other videos, I always recommend that you just scan quickly through these. So sales journal overcast, uh, rates has gone in the ledger with a different figure, payment of 50 spent on motor repairs has gone in motor vehicles, discount received had been entered on discount allowed, close in inventory looks like they put the wrong figure in, um, a check received from Doc Limited has been credited to the account of Doc Limited and returns outwards has been undercast. And they're asking me to do a, uh, to prepare a statement of corrected profit for the year, show clearly whether each adjustment is added, subtracted or has no effect. Okay, let's have a look then. So with these, the, the sort of underlying secret is we're talking here about profit and profit is calculated in the income statement. So when we're considering these, we need to think does the error affect something in the income statement? And if the answer is yes, then we know that when they correct the error, it will change the profit. But if the error only affects things that would be found in the statement of financial position, also known as the balance sheet, then it won't have any effect on the profit. So I'm going to use, show you a thought process technique that you might find helpful. So I'm looking at the first error. And the first error says the sales journal had been overcast by £400. So the first question I ask myself in my thought process is, which account, what type of accounts are involved? Well, if the sales journal is wrong, that means now the sales account will be wrong. And the sales account is an income. If you think about mnemonics such as dead click, sales is an income. And then the second question I ask myself as part of my thought process is, is this entered in an income statement? Would I find sales in an income statement? And the answer, yes. So we know then that this error will have caused the profit to be wrong. So I read the error again, sales has been overcast. So Max has said he sold more than he really did. So that means at the moment his profit is too high. So when he corrects it, his profit will go down. And so in the statement of corrected profit on the right hand side, which has been started for me, I'm going to record then error number one. The sales is an income which has been overcast. So his profit, I need to subtract £400 from. It's not too critical what you write in the sort of narrative where I've written sales income overcast. It's just kind of stating the key thing, the type of account perhaps. Um, and But what is important is that you identify whether we're adding, subtracting or whether this error or the correction of this error has had no effect on the profit. Let's have a look at the second one. So the same thought process. Rates of £780 had been entered correctly in the cash book, but had been posted to the general ledger as 870 So again, question one in my head, what type which accounts are involved? Well, it's the rates account that's involved and rates is an expense. And then the second question I think to myself, is this entered in an income statement? Yes, it is. Expenses are entered in an income statement. So this means that this will have affected the profit. So I think what's actually happened, Max has posted, he's basically said that he spent £870 on rates when actually he only spent £780. So he said he spent more than he did. Well, when we reduce that then, that's going to increase his profit because actually he spent less than that. He didn't spend 870, he only spent 780. So the expenses will go down when he corrects it and the profit will go up. 
So you can see I've added that to my statement. I've said the rates is an expense that was overstated and therefore I'm adding 90 to his profit. The next one, same thought process. A payment of £50 spent on motor repairs had been debited to the motor vehicles account. Question one in my mind, what type of accounts are involved? Well, we've got two here. We've got the motor repairs account, which is an expense, and we've also got the motor vehicles account, which is an asset. And then the second question, are these entered in an income statement? Well, yes to the first one, but no to the second one. Motor vehicles and asset account is entered in the statement of financial position, but the motor repairs, yes, is in the income statement, so that will have an effect on the profit. So for this question, I'm not too bothered about the fact that the motor vehicles is wrong, it won't affect the profit, but the fact that the motor repairs account is wrong, well, that will affect the profit. So I look again at what he's done. He said he spent £50 on motor repairs, but he's put it on the debit of motor vehicles. He's treated this expense as an asset. So at the moment, in his income statement, he hasn't recorded the fact that he spent £50 on motor repairs. So that means his expenses at the moment are too low. So when he puts it right, what's going to happen is um, his profit is going to go down by £50. You can see there I've said it's motor repairs and expense omitted, which effectively it is. By putting it in the asset, the motor vehicles account, he's omitted it from the motor repairs account. He's put it in the wrong account and, and that's now made his profit incorrect. Error number four, discount received of £62 had been entered on the debit of discount allowed. So same thought process, what accounts have we got involved here? Well, discount received is treated as an income. Discount allowed, if we've allowed one of our trade receivables some discount, that's a cost to us, so we treat it as an expense. And then the second question I go through in my mind, would I enter these things in an income statement? Well, the answer yes to both. Discount received is added on under gross profit. Discount allowed is recorded as an expense. So this will have caused then his profit to be incorrect. I've got to be a little bit careful here. Discount received has been recorded on the debit of discount allowed. So discount received, we've said is an income and Max has treated it as an expense. So what he's done, he said that he's basically allowed somebody £62 of discount. Because that's an expense, that would have reduced his profit by 62. But actually what happened was he received £62 of discount. So I've actually got to double this one to put it right because he's effectively, by treating it as an expense, he's taken £62 off his profit. When what he should have done is treated it as an income, which would have added £62 to his profit. So if you want to think of it a different way, he's currently negative 62 and I've got to get to positive 62. So that means when he corrects this error, he's going to see his profit increase by £124. So watch out for these sorts of ones. Sometimes you might have to do a different figure to the one that you presented with, such as here, where we've had to double. Let's have a look at the others. And we're number five. The closing inventory had been recorded in the trading section as 2,400. The correct figure was 240 pounds. I go through the steps. Which accounts have we got involved? Inventory. Is this entered in an income statement? Yes. Inventory is an account that's a little bit unique to all of the others, um, as you will hopefully know, because within an inventory account, we have figures that are transferred to the income statement, and we also have balances which are found in the statement of financial position. But the closing inventory forms part of the cost of sales calculation in the trading section of an income statement. So the fact that Max has put it in wrong will have affected his profit. Now he has said that his closing inventory was far higher than it really was. And there's a little rule here that you can try to remember. And it goes like this. If you overstate your closing inventory, then you will overstate your profit. And obviously vice versa. If you understate your closing inventory, you will understate your profit. So in this case, Max has overstated his closing inventory. And because in the cost of sales section, closing inventory is subtracted 
from the purchases and other items such as the original opening inventory by taking off more what it does is it lowers his cost of sales and then means his profit is overstated so at the moment his profit is overstated so when he puts it right the profit will go down by the difference and we can see it there error number five I need to subtract £2,160. Error number six, a cheque for £503 received from Doc without a K Limited had been credited to the account of Doc with a K Limited. So we've got two what appear to be trade receivables with very similar names and the cheque has ended up in the wrong account. Again, I go through the steps, which accounts have we got involved? Well, DOC Limited and DOC with a K Limited, they're both trade receivables, they're both assets. The cheque itself, um, that would have gone into the bank. Bank is an asset. So all the things that are involved are assets. Second thought process, are these in the income statement? No, assets are only in the statement of financial position. So yes, it's an error. Yes, it needs correcting, but it won't affect the profit. So for this question, it doesn't matter. Remember what the question asks us though, and they often say this in assessments and exam type questions, to make sure you state clearly if it has no effect. Because if you just left that out, the examiner might think that you'd left it out because you weren't sure what to do. So make sure you state, as I have, quite clearly no effect. Show the person looking at your work that you're confident that you know that this has no effect. And the final one, number seven, the returns outwards account had been undercast by £49. Go through the same thought process. Account involved, returns outwards. Would I find returns outwards in an income statement? Yes. And just think about this. Where is returns outwards? You might have heard of it as purchases returns. It's the same thing. Well, in the, again, it's in the cost of sales section, um, like we talked about in error five. And in cost of sales, you might have purchases and then less returns outwards. So returns outwards reduce your purchases because effectively you purchase some inventory and then you've sent it back. But what Max has done, he has undercast his returns outwards by £49. So in other words, he sent more back to his supplier than he's actually recorded. So at the moment, his purchases figure is too high because he's bought the stuff but he hasn't recorded the fact that some of that stuff he sent back. So when he corrects this error, the returns outwards will go up. And because that is subtracted from purchases, it means then when the returns outwards goes up, the purchases will go down. And because purchases is an expense, if that goes down, ultimately, when he corrects it, his profit will go up. So you can see there I'm adding the 49. And final stage, all you need to do is total up your end column and see what the new figure is. I've got £5,493. Make sure you give it a narrative. That is the corrected profit for the year. And there's the question complete. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a like, share, subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Accounting How. If there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, please just let us know in the comments. Thank you very much.